I'm just gonna give you a small list of people who had questions in the Bible. Abraham wrestled with God's promises over and over. At one point, he didn't even question God. He just did what he was going to do. And at his wife's suggestion, because he saw her desperation to fulfill God's promise of a family, he ends up impregnating her mistress so that she can start a family, which is a horrible idea because it's not God's will. And they were totally impatient about it. And so that baby grows up to be the start of the Islamic religion. And if you know anything about the Islamic religion and the Jewish religion, they still don't get along to this day, right? Not good, but God still comes through and he fulfills his promise of a family. His wife, Sarah, not only questioned, but she laughed at the angel's prophecy about a family. Moses said, hey, could you send someone else? Elijah asked, could you just kill me so I don't have to go through this? Jonah straight up told God no and then got in a boat and tried to run away from God, which I find hilarious. David asked why and how long and how, why are you far away and why do you hide in times of trouble? All of this is in Psalm and everywhere else David is mentioned. He questioned God's timing over and over <clears throat> because Samuel the prophet crowned him as king while Saul was still king and then for 10 years he hid in caves and ran for his life. Now, I don't know about you, but to follow God, I don't want to live in caves for 10 years. I don't even want to go camping. I'm not going to live in caves. Habakkuk asked, why is this happening? Jeremiah told God he was too young. Gideon and Zechariah didn't believe God would do what he said. Mary, the mother of Jesus said, how can this be? Nicodemus had a ton of questions and met with Jesus at night to ask them. John the Baptist, after baptizing Jesus and seeing the spirit of God land on Jesus like a dove, hearing God's voice and say, this is Jesus, my son, in whom I'm well pleased. He said, is that really who he says he is? Mary and Martha question Jesus' timing and reasoning for delaying when their brother died, whom he ends up raising from the dead. Jesus himself in the garden of Gethsemane, before being tortured and killed, went to God and said, is there any other way? Any other way? How many of you have asked that? God, is there any other way? Thomas the disciple, this is my favorite one, spent three years following Jesus and his ministry. Three years. He saw Jesus' miracles. He did miracles himself. And after Jesus had died, when all the disciples but Thomas saw that he had risen from the dead, he appeared to them without Thomas. They tried to tell him and he said, no, no, I already saw what happened. He died. If I don't see him and feel his scars, I'm not going to believe. Now, I really think this guy a questioner like myself, gets a bum rap, right? He questions some very bonkers things that go on in his life, and what do we call him for thousands of years? Downing Thomas. Peter denies that Jesus even knows him, that he even knows Jesus after spending all that time with him and being his disciple, and we don't call him anything. We don't call him a denier, right? But Jesus doesn't call Thomas this. When he shows up to the, to the disciples with Thomas now, this is eight days he has to wait. Eight days later, Jesus is risen from the dead. He doesn't call Thomas anything, does he? He calls Thomas close to him and he says, come here, see what you need to see and feel what you need to feel so that you believe. Now, I personally, personally believe that Jesus in his glorified new resurrected body shows up with scars, which he doesn't need to have to show Thomas that the very thing he thought would destroy him is going to save him and bring him to belief. He didn't, he didn't shame Thomas for his questions or his doubts or his curiosities or whatever. He knows that that's how God made him. So Jesus doesn't do that with us either, does he? He knows what you need. He's not shaming you for your questions or your fears. He's not judging you for your doubts, but he does know that the very thing, the very question, you think might destroy you, could save you and bring you to belief.